So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about proper speaker placement and layout in a family room type situation. And family rooms can be kind of challenging because family rooms are multi-purpose rooms. We don't only use them for watching television, listening to music, uh, we use it for a lot of other things. And almost everybody has a setup in their family room, um, but we don't, again, we don't always use it for that. So uh, it can be a real challenge to find something that looks good and also, uh, performs well in a situation like that um, and while just about everybody has an opinion on what looks good in a room and doesn't not everybody has a very good grasp on the basic concepts uh, when it comes to laying out the front speakers in a family room to get good performance so what I've done is I've come up with five basic rules for proper front speaker placement and layout in a family room and these rules, if you can follow them, you'll, you can expect really good performance and understand that you're probably in, not gonna be able to hit all of these rules. It's really hard to do that in real life, but the point is is the more of these boxes that you can tick off when it comes to the, this speaker layout, the better your system's gonna perform and you'll be able to have a, a better idea of how to strike a balance between something that looks great and something that sounds great in your family room. So let's go over the five rules that I've come up with one by one, starting with speakers should be aimed in the direction of the listeners with a clear line of sight. It's important not to have anything blocking the front speakers. Um, any, from where you're sitting, if you need to be able to see the front three speakers and they need to be pointed in your general direction. And the reason for this is that we need to strike the right balance between the direct sound that comes from the speakers and right to your ears and reflected sound, that sound that comes from the speakers and bounces off the walls and ceilings and other surfaces in the room uh, to create that feeling of space. And if we end up with um, speakers that are blocked and then we get more reflected sound, too much reflected sound as compared to direct sound, it, we have start to develop problems with um, intelligibility and clarity uh, and things like that. So you wanna make sure you can see the front speakers and they're pointed in your general direction. The second rule is speakers should be on the same plane as the TV and relative to each other. And that just means like height-wise across the front three speakers, they need to be pretty much lined up with each other, plus or minus a couple of feet, depending on how far back you're sitting. And the point to this is we don't want sound to jump from for example, say we have the front speakers too low, like low to the ground, and then the center channel speaker way up high on a cabinet. And as the sound moves across, it goes from low to high to low and kind of jumps around and doesn't follow a nice smooth path. It can be distracting and the sound doesn't get placed properly and it's, it's generally not good. Also, we want it to be in the same plane as the television because as the sound moves in relation to stuff that's happening on the screen, we want it to look like it fits with what we're seeing. We want it to look like it's coming from the TV or and sound like it's coming from the TV or to the left or to the right of the television. Uh, and keep us involved in that uh, TV show movie experience. The third rule is that those front speakers, they really ought to be placed, they should be placed at the same height as the listeners. And this can be kind of tough because a lot of people these days uh, put their televisions over fireplaces and things like that. Um, and the reason that it's important to have the speakers at the same height as the listeners goes back to that idea of achieving or, or getting, benefiting from the direct sound that comes from the speakers. And in particular, high frequencies. They're very directional. And if you have the speakers placed too high and those are shooting over your head, then you're really not gonna, um, you're gonna lose a lot on uh, intel some intelligibility um, and some of the airiness to the sound. You're still gonna hear it because you'll hear uh, the reflected sounds uh, from those high frequencies bouncing off the walls, but the timing's gonna be a little off and it's uh, likely to cause a problem. So it's always better if you can keep them at um, a height closer to the listeners. Uh, the fourth rule is that the speakers should be spaced to allow for audible distinction between each one. If you have all front three speakers squished in together underneath the television set, it's going to be kind of tough to distinguish 
left to right, right to left, and really benefit and appreciate that big sound stage that you can get uh, from having your speakers properly spaced and, and appreciate the movement that happens on screen as things go um, across the, the screen and such. So um, you really ought to try to achieve good spacing between those front three speakers. And the last rule is that the center channel speaker always stays with the television because the only role for the center speaker in the system is to anchor anything that happens on the screen to the TV screen. Um, and the only way it can do that is if the speaker is with the TV screen. If it's too far away from the TV screen, then those sounds aren't gonna sound like they're coming from the screen. It's really not doing its job anymore. And the, um, the placement's just gonna be wonky and it's not gonna sound right. So uh, next I wanna show you some actual family room type situations. I've pulled some random pictures um, off the interwebs and I want to uh, go through a few of them with you and show you how we can apply these rules to these real world family rooms um, in hopes to get the best result possible. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so here we have a nice, lovely, contemporary looking family room type situation. They don't seem to have a sound system yet. So what could we do in a scenario like this where we have the TV resting on this piece of furniture? What kind of speakers would we use? Where would we put them? Let's uh, let's take a quick look. So I think the first thing that we need to do here is um, let's clean up the TV situation by mounting it on the wall. So I'm just going to get rid of that and we're going to put it up on the wall there, which looks a lot better. Excuse my uh, amateur Photoshop abilities here, but I, I like the way that looks better. And it's also going to give us um, a spot to rest our center channel speaker. So when we add the speakers here, um, what I would do is something like this. We got a couple of column speakers flanking the piece of furniture, a center speaker resting there. So let's consider our rules here just for a moment. First, this should this, the speaker should be aimed in the direction of the listeners with a clear line of sight. Um, that's pretty obvious. They're all pointed towards the listening area. There's nothing really blocking them that we should be concerned about. Uh, speakers should be on the same plane as the TV and also relative to each other. You can see here that they're close to the height of the television. So uh, the center channel anchors the, um, the voices and the things that happen on the screen to the TV screen. Um, and they're all on a very similar plane so we can expect smooth transitions as things pan from left to right and right to left and so on. Um, speakers need to be uh, the same height as the listeners. Uh, which they are. We've got a nice low TV mounting height here um, and the speakers are pretty darn close to the height of the listeners when they're sitting down um, and the, they should be properly spaced to allow for audible distinction between each one. We've got nice separation between them so uh, and I've already mentioned how the center channel speaker is stays with the TV so feel pretty good about the placement in a uh, setup like this and really when you th consider the aesthetics Anytime you have a piece of furniture already on the floor, um, you can get away with doing really nice, great sounding column speakers like this, and they make them in a lot of different finishes that include real wood furniture grade finishes to blend with, with just about any decor. Um, so yeah, that's, I think this is what we would do here. So let's move on to the next scenario. All right, so here we have a... Uh, set up with a large TV on the wall, beautiful looking uh, family room type setup, might be a basement even, and uh, these people have uh, got some advice, somebody told them to put the front three speakers way up in the ceiling there, um, and I'd consider that to be bad advice based if you go through the rules that we set up, so let's pretend that these people, they, uh, they saw my video, they saw this video, or, or they came to me for advice and decided they weren't going to do that, so let's get rid of those real quick. So I think the what we got to do here, if the um, best so solution to this would be to do on-wall speakers uh, with a really nice um, on wall style center so what I'm going to do is just kind of raise the TV up a little bit and then add my speakers in so what I've got here is on wall speakers that match the height of our setup as the left and right and then I've also got a nice 
um, almost like a soundbar style center channel that matches the width of the TV. Aesthetically, this looks really good. It all looks like it goes together. Um, and it achieves some of those rules that we're after, like the having the speakers aimed towards the listeners um, and without being blocked. Those ceiling speakers are aiming straight down. They're not really pointed at the listening position, so they don't follow the rule quite so well. These do a much better job because they're, they're pointed out towards the listeners. Um, they're much more in line with the, the television screen in a similar plane to each other. They definitely uh, succeed in fulfilling that role, um, so things make sense as they happen relative to the TV screen. Center channels anchored with the with the television, so everything sound that comes from here sounds like it's uh, coming from the TV screen there. Um, and spacing wise, we do pretty well. Um, there, I think they're spaced enough that you get a feel for the sound that moves. It's not uh, this scenario doesn't really allow for much more uh, uh, wider spacing I don't think uh, this is I think a, a much better solution than what they started with and this is what I would do and still have it look pretty amazing in in this setup so moving on to the next one uh, here's a common situation where the TV is over a fireplace um, so what would we do in this case now this is something I see a lot. We got bookcases on either side, and a lot of people will just take the easy way here and stick a sound bar under the TV, um, and that doesn't really take advantage of that that spacing and getting that big sound stage that we talked about in our rules. So, what I would do here is I would I would use the sound bar style center channel once again because we we need that. Uh, center to anchor the everything to the screen and then I would put some small bookshelf speakers in the built-ins and pick a finish that complements the room or matches the uh, or paint them to match the um, the built-ins there so they blend nicely now we've got that wonderful spacing nice big sound stage the center channel anchors the voices to the screen the height is close to the that of the listeners and they're all in a similar plane with the TV and with each other. So we've satisfied, once again, just about all our rules there um, and didn't really detract from the look of the space. So let's see what's next. We got another fireplace situation. And you can see here that the, um, the people do have the speakers here um, up above the TV and wall speakers. And this is not a bad setup. You can see that they got great spacing. They got the center right with the television, um, and they, uh, uh, yeah, it's, they're generally aimed towards the listeners out into the room instead of down at the floor. Um, although this looks like it's a pretty small room, so the, there's a lot of information that's shooting over their heads. Um, but if it was me walking into this for the first time, uh, let's see, I would. Uh, probably do I would not have necessarily gone that direction what you could do is raise that TV up a little bit and then add the speakers like this so take advantage again of these bookcases bring them down closer to uh, the height of the listeners still get that nice spacing and also you use that um, sound bar style uh, center channel speaker up with the television so that it sounds like it's coming from the TV screen I think this looks a little bit cleaner um, and it's going to sound a little bit better. Uh, just just to touch on the the idea of the in wall speakers. In wall speakers are usually made to try to kind of blend in and disappear in a room. The problem is when you do them with a television that's a natural focal point of the room, your eyes drawn to it, and then it almost it looks like you were trying to hide the speakers, but there they are right there. And they they instead of looking cohesive, it looks like. Um, something you tried to hide but failed um, ends up not looking quite as good as I think the a more cohesive solution with speakers that look like they belong with the television would would and also generally performance wise in wall speakers don't do as well as a traditional cabinet in room type speaker does as far as sonic performance goes uh, let's take a look take a look at one last scenario here so here we've got another 
uh, family room fireplace situation. Really common to put um, TVs over fireplaces, so it's so easy to arrange furniture around the focal point of the room, which is often a fireplace and a television. So let's go ahead and mount a TV for them. Oops, uh, right here. I think this is probably makes the most sense. We've basically just got a TV and, in this case, a soundbar, because since we have different things happening on either side of the fireplace, it's hard to come up with a, a symmetrical solution here. There's not much we can do with a speaker on this right side of the fireplace. Um, and the built-ins are nice for bookshelves, but we can't duplicate that on the other side. Not enough spacing on the wall to really justify doing on-wall speakers to the left and right. So this is a, one of those examples where a soundbar type um, three-channel or two-channel speaker makes uh, the most sense in a room to, to balance aesthetics with good sonic performance. Um, this at least meets the rules of directing the sound out towards the listeners and anchoring the sound with the television and looking good. So I think that's probably be the best option here. So that's pretty much it. I hope after watching this and going through those examples, now that you have these five basic rules of placing your speakers in your family room, you feel a little bit more comfortable knowing what will work sonically as so that you can balance that with what you know is going to look good in your room and come up with that great result of having uh, something that looks great and sounds great. In future videos, we're going to discuss what to do with the rear speakers and what to do with the subwoofer um, for situations like a family room. But now that you know what to do with the front speakers, I think you're well on your way to having something great. So thanks again for watching. See you next time.